Oh, hello there. Welcome once more to Crunchwise Kitchen. And if this is your first time stopping by, I would like to say a very warm aqua to you. Today I'm meal prepping. That is what I typically do. I cook my meals ahead of time, especially for the days that I have to work. So when I have to work, you know, I work 12 and a half hour shift. So the days I work, I don't want to be bothered with cooking. So I'm bringing you along with me and we are going to do some realistic everyday cooking. So I'm making some wachi and stew. I'll be making some jollof as well, some granite soup. I'm cooking bambara beans, frying fish and grilling some fish as well. And I'm bringing you on board. So these are all four recipes. I'm taking you from the beginning to the end. I hope you enjoy watching this. So when I start, if I'm going to make uh, some stew, I start off by washing and blending my tomatoes, then I boil it down. So that is already done. These bambara beans, I soaked them the night before, so they are ready to be cooked. So I've washed them and I'm going to now go put them on the stove to cook. So those are the ones that take a lot of time, the tomatoes boiling and then the beans. So I've covered my beans and now I am going to go ahead and soak the beans that I'll use to cook the wachi. And there is a full wachi recipe for you, but that is two cups of beans, black eyed peas. So I'm going to soak that. So I'm going to go ahead and get my meats ready as well. I have some fish, mackerel, white thin fish. I also have some goat meat, tribe, oxtail, cow foot. And I'm just going to go ahead and clean all of them and then we'll continue with our cooking. So I'll get some utensils ready, some pots and pans. And one thing I've come to love about cooking my meat for my stews and soup, like ox, oxtail, cow food, those ones that are, you know, take forever to cook, I power boil them in my pressure cooker for maybe like depending on how much. So today the ox tail and the cow foot, I'm just going to go ahead and power boil in the pressure cooker for about 20 minutes. And that way by the time it's done cooking for that 20 minutes, it is slightly softened. It's not any much softened. It's almost like how you buy the uh pre-cooked uh cow foot in the market in ghana so then it's it doesn't take forever like how it will typically take to cook and these came from the butcher so they are very good flavorful but also the meat can be very very hard to get soft you know it takes forever to cook so i'm just cleaning them i'm scraping off all those smoke marks on them and then i'm cutting off the parts that i don't know to me don't look desirable and that is how it is so this is actually ox still still with the skin on and i like to make my soups and watches stew with that so i'm done with those ones and now this is my good meat i'm cleaning that and that is what i'm going to be making my watches stew with so i'm done with the meat and now we'll focus on the fish So I've been meal prepping for a long time, like if I can remember since my college days in Kenya University, I used to be like on Saturdays or on a day that I, that I don't have a lecture, if I felt like cooking, I would just, I used to live in a hostel and I would be in the kitchen cooking up a storm all day long. And like people would be like, why not to your honeymoon, yo? Yes, Panchua. Yes, I love my food and I love home cooked meal. I grew up in a home that we normally had home cooked meals and that has stayed with me like cooking is is just a joy i don't get tired cooking i get tired of cleaning up and everything else after but i will cook so i cleaned up my uh, white thin fish i just trimmed it and now i'm gonna go ahead and cut it up and white thin is good this is what we call alata kakoba comb you know i just love it it's so hard to find so one time i went to the Asian supermarket and I found them like I trust me I grabbed all that I could find in there froze it and I've been eating them in bits this is the very last of them and some of you have asked me previously how I did it so I'm gonna fry it you know it, this is like a whole recipe everything that I'm doing we're going to go through it together so this is real realistic cooking and I hope you watch to the end even though it seems like a lengthy video hopefully you'll pick it a thing or two from it so now I'm cleaning the mackerel, what we call back home salmon, me I make a salmon. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trimming them and I'm going to cut them up after that. And then I'll grill them to be almost like the smoke 
mackerel we would buy from the market in Ghana, but this is going to be well seasoned that you can eat it raw as well. So now that I'm done cleaning them, I'm just going to cut them up. So I'll cut off the heads and then cut them into two. And that way it's so easy for you to remove the guts. So you see, I just put my finger through one end, push the guts all the way down and that is it. And then you rinse it out. And the other portion, I try to take the little bit of gut in there out. And that is it. So I'm going to do the same to everything. And then when we are finished, I'll season it. And of course, once you're done cleaning your meats, you know, all your fresh raw meats, especially with the blood in it and all, you want to clean up your, all your surfaces. So I'm just going to go ahead and wash and disinfect my countertop, the area that I used before we proceed. That is very, very essential. You don't want to spread any bacteria, E. coli or whatever it will be, you know, to your foods and all, some of your items. So we do that and then we'll proceed. So now that we're done cleaning up all our meats and fish, I'm going to go ahead and start cooking. So the ax steel and the cow foot, I just cover with a little bit of water just to cover it. Then I set it in my instant pot. That's my pressure cooker. And I'm going to cook it on manual for 20 minutes. And after 20 minutes, it's just going to be perfect for you to really actually start your soup with. So it speeds up the cooking process a little bit. And I really, really, really don't like doing dishes or cleaning up. So if I can, I try to do it as I cook because once I'm done eating and I'm tired, you know, it's just hard to do that. So when I cut up my fish, I put them on a rack so it will drain most of the juices of it. And now I think it's drained enough. So I'm just going to, I transfer them into my bowl and now I've washed the rack and the tray because I'm still going to use the same thing to cook the fish on, to bake the fish on. So I'm just trying to dry it up a little bit and I like to line it with a aluminum foil that way you know less washing for me like I just said I don't like doing dishes so I line this with aluminum foil put the uh, rack back on it and now I'm going to season my fish and then I'll bake it so I, I'm going to prep some onions first and once you are cooking in bulk like this I just like to do everything together so I'm going to blend my onion with ginger and 
garlic and everything and then i'll split it you know just pour onto each of each uh kind of meat or fish that i need to cook so far as it needs of course you need ginger in all your fresh meats that is me i guess but i think it's just it's just the best marinade um ginger garlic onions on all your raw meats is like very essential that is if you like ginger yeah and i'm doing it like real real <laughs> home cooking when i'm rushing sometimes i forget how many chopping boards i have and just do it straight in my hands But mind you, my knife is not too sharp, so I'm not scared. And that's a lot of ginger because I love ginger. So now I'm done with the ginger and we're focusing on the garlic now. So I'm going to go ahead and peel all of this. And then we'll add to everything and blend. <music> this with your little one in tow trying to get some attention trying to grab stuff and it's not easy so hey shout out to all you moms out there our job is never done but we still continue trying to you know achieve it all not easy but we can do it god give us strength so i have my uh, goat meat here now i've added some of my blended um spice if i should say i've added some uh star anise one shrimp tablet some salt and i have mixed it up you know stirred it and i'm going to go ahead and start cooking my meat and this is going to be for the watch stew <music> So, uh, the meat that I pre cooked in the pressure cooker is done, and as you can see, like I told you, it's not too soft or anything, it's just perfect for me to start my soup at this point. So, I've added some of the blended spice, some salt, and I'm gonna go ahead and start making this granite soup as well. So, do you meal prep? I find it very essential, like if you're a working person and you have no help, you know. It's just essential that you have your meals prepared ahead of time. It saves you time. It saves money. And you don't go ahead and just be buying street food or food, you know, you know, fast food that you really don't know what you're eating. So for me, doing this is very essential. It doesn't even matter if I'm just, you know, trying to lose weight or not. As you can see, this is not weight loss food I'm cooking. This is just everyday food. But I get anxiety when I have no food at home. Like I always want to make sure there is food at home, cooked food in my fridge. And I have done this for a long time and I think it's helpful. So I've marinated my fish now. It's uh, some of the blended spice. So like I said, I make a big batch and then you just divide it among everything that you're cooking. Salt, 
uh, pepper and now I'm going to bake it. My oven is preheated at 350 degrees and it's going to go there for about at least 50 minutes to an hour. Like part way through the cooking, I'll, you know, turn it so the other side will cook and that is it. That will come out looking like your grilled um, mackerel from the market. So when I cooked my meat, I just added the blended spice with no water. And at this point, it's cooked enough for the flavors to really, you know, catch onto the meat. So I added a little bit of water. And that, I mean, the cow foot and the ox tail. And that is a fresh bay leaf that I got from the fridge. And it goes in here with the meat to bring extra flavor to it. So the onion, garlic, ginger mix, you know, and the spice mix that I didn't use yet, I pour aside so I can free up the blender. And now I'm going to blend some peanut butter, like real Ghana paste from Ghana. Yes, straight for my sister with love. Thank you, Mavna. I need some more. And so I'm going to blend that. And once I'm done blending, I'm going to cook it on the side. So, you know, it, it helps speed up the cooking process when you do this. So it's going to cook on the side whilst the meat is also cooking. And then half part way, I'm just going to mix them together and our soup will be on course. This whole time the bambara beans has been cooking, I didn't forget about it or anything. I have just not been showing you, but I added some water previously and now it is soft enough. So I'm adding my onions, tomato and pepper and I'm going to let this cook until soft and I can bring them out and blend. And as you can see, I kept swishing my pots around so because depending on what I'm cooking at every given point, you want to have your pot set in well. And always remember moms, when you are cooking and your, your pot or pan has handles, please bring them to the side instead of facing you where the baby can grab it because that is a hazard and your baby can end up getting burnt, you know, pulling and getting himself scalded with some hot liquid. And we don't want that so always to the side please so as i'm cooking and i'm helping ivana do her homework and all as well i'm also trying to clean up and this table is like my worst nightmare now when i when we had it we had no kids and i just love the glass always clean shiny glass table but these kids just always they always smear stuff on it so I just to prevent me from cleaning it the way I do, I normally just put a tablecloth over it and that solves the problem. The tablecloth gets dirty, I take it off, go wash it, put another one on. Like I can't be slaving all day like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, so tablecloth here and every once in a while, depending on who is coming over, I will take the tablecloth off and clean the table, get it perfect for whoever is visiting. And of course, when you're doing all this kind of cooking, you want to open your windows if you can, burn some candles just to neutralize the odors a little bit. And that is what I'm doing right now. And I also have an infuser on trying to make sure all these spells, which doesn't really take get rid of everything, but it does help. They all come together to help a little bit. And the peanut butter every now and then, you stir it because you're trying to not make this burn.
So my onions are ready now and I'm bringing them out. I'll take out the onion pepper as well as some beans because I like to have my beans, whatever kind of beans I cook, I like it to have some creaminess. And look at that little guy. Yeah, too much, I tell you. He makes me dizzy. So I blended the tomatoes and the other ingredients plus some beans, pour them in here and I'm just going to season it with some salt. In my previous video where I made um, bambara beans on its own, I tried to do it the way I've come to learn. Typically, we don't cook this, uh, we don't cook it this way. But in that video, I added some sugar. But when I tasted it, it was sweet, a little bit sweet. And most of you, my friends here, told me I could also add the sugar at the table. So I'm not going to add sugar to this at all. And I'll decide when we're eating it if I want to add sugar. So I'm going to go ahead and make some amuto. That is rice balls rice balls to go with the peanut butter soup that's going to be for dinner as you can see it's already getting dark and yeah i learned from other people you can use your pressure cooker to cook your rice it softens it so makes it easy so that's what i just did i washed my rice until the water was clear as the naba will say and i'm boiling it in the pressure cooker it's just a little bit of rice so manual for 10 minutes and that is going to be perfect and my soup at this point is doing great. I already added the peanut butter to the soup base and it's cooking beautifully. And I'm going to go ahead and start making my stew. So I'm going to fry my meat. So I poured some oil in the pot and this is some dry fish or smoked uh, fish that is going to bring some flavor. Like, you know, this is peanut butter soup that you want that smoked fish flavor in there. And that is so good just delicious gifty this is because of you that is cooking with gifty she made this granite soup i told her i'm gonna make it right away you thought i was joking girl i wasn't joking may her on a sanity if i see it and i have to make it i will make it <laughs> so remember to take out your aniseed when you cook you don't want it to once your meat is done you want to take it out so you don't mistakenly serve your meal with that because i always say it when you bite into it you will never forget you probably wouldn't ever want to cook with it so my mackerel is done i flipped it and my camera didn't catch it so there wasn't any point showing it but i flipped it halfway through the cooking process and now it's cooked to perfection and i've added the pieces that i want to have in my granite soup in here and that soup tastes so good it smells amazing i can't wait to have my rice balls with it and for the bambara beans i'm gonna put a little bit of extra virgin coconut oil so that is what i just added in there to bring in some creaminess and another depth of flavor you know that coconut pure coconut oil smells so amazingly good and the beans is done i'm just gonna let it simmer down a little bit and that is it and i'm frying my goat meat now all done now bringing it out and i like to if i can but sometimes when i'm i really want to be fast i just go ahead and cook start cooking this too as the meat is you know sitting, uh, being boiled and when i'm done i fry it in a different part of oil and i save that oil for another time but today i tried because i wanted all that flavor in that watches too so i fried it in there waited before i can make my stew and so those are sliced onions in there of course, I love my curry. And there is a watch it stew recipe for you as well. So how I smart cook is like, I'm making tomato base to watch it stew, and that can be the same base for my jollof. So I just go ahead and make it together. And once it's cooked, I don't put any stock or anything in it. So once the soup, the stew is cooked, I'm gonna split it and I will use different kinds of um, marinade, I mean, seasonings or stock so to cook it so it tastes different so i've blended some garlic ginger aniseed plus the extra that i poured on the side and that i poured into my pot to fry a little bit and now i've added my tomatoes that we cooked down from the very beginning I'll let that cook for a while and now my rice is done cooking so i'm just gonna check to make sure it's good and then i'll come back to it later so i cooked it with the you know it wasn't venting so it would cook with pressure that's how you get it fast so i'm just trying to 
get the pressure out so i'm letting it vent and when it's done i can go ahead and mash up my rice so the tomatoes and peppers are coming out of the granite soup now and it's going to be blended and our soup is almost done so the rice balls and the soup came together almost at the same time and that is what we ate and then the rest of course is going to be prepped for other days so when i cut up my fish i seasoned right away with some salt and let it just marinate in the fridge and now i've brought it out and i'm adding a little bit of tone six pepper seasoning and some black pepper toss it to make sure everything is covered and i'm gonna go ahead and fry it as soon as i'm done making this rice ball so using a wooden spoon i'm gonna try to mash up my rice and that is how we make rice balls and so until it gets into a consistency that is almost like banku or fufu my daughter calls this rice fufu. Yeah, so I'm making rice fufu that she loves so much. And we're going to go ahead and have some of that to eat. And then I'll continue with my cooking. So our tomato stew at this point has been cooking on low. To medium heat for almost an hour it is cooked to perfection and now i'm gonna go ahead and split so i put about half of it into the pot that i cooked the meat in the goat meat and that is going to be the stew for the watching so i'm gonna mix that and now here are some millet leaves that's watching leaf that i'm rinsing out and i'm going to boil that in a pot of water i got out my rice now and I'm going to pour some. So this I didn't measure, but there's a watch uh, video recipe for you. And you know, typically the Ghanaian way we just eyeball, but I have one that I have good measurements and everything for you. So you can go ahead and use that to cook your watch to perfection. So I've given my rice a thorough wash and now I'm just going to drain the water from it so I poured it into a strainer and I'm going to make sure I get as much of the liquids out of it and that goes in the extra the part of stew that I'm reserved for cooking the jollof so I'm just going to let the rice toast a little bit in this stew this is rich you know on Instagram people constantly ask me how I get my jollof to be that beautiful rich color for me it is all with cooking your stew until it's very very well cooked so i went in the fridge and brought out my stock that is the pan drippings from when i made my leg of lamb and so when you you refrigerate or freeze any stock or anything that has fat mostly it solidifies this way on the surface so it's easy for you to just scoop up so normally when you cook and you have enough time i would suggest that you refrigerate your stock and that way you can able, be able to take out the animal fat which is not so good for you just like i did you know and this is perfect it smells so good that's this jollof is just going to be amazing so i'm just gonna let this cook with very little moisture because today we're cooking the jollof my way and they have to eat it whether they like it or not <laughs> and for the watch i put a little bit of coconut oil in there to make it even more flavorful and so now i'm going to go ahead and add the rice for the wache as well and whilst that cooks i'm gonna go ahead and you know package the rest of the smoked mackerel you know the homemade smoked mackerel and this is gonna go in the freezer and just look at this just take the aluminum foil off and you have a clean pan I don't have to wash it at all. So I'm bringing the watchy leaves out now. My water is very, very, uh, even kind of with me say a D like, you know, I've really, really intensified the color. The dyes in the uh, leaves have really 
come out in the water and so i'm gonna get a beautiful rich color for my watch it so i let it cook a little bit with the beans in there so the beans gets a little soft and then i'll add my rice and meanwhile the jollof is doing beautifully so i gave it a stir and now i'm gonna cover it with some parchment paper to trap the moisture so it cooks with just a little bit of moisture to get it the way i want and i'm doing the same for the watch it so whilst I'm waiting for that to cook, I'm going to go ahead and focus on the fish now. So I added some uh, salt and cilantro lime seasoning from Tones into my flour. This is just all-purpose flour. Gave it a stir to mix up everything. And now I'm coating my fish, which is already well marinated in here. And I'm going to go ahead and fry it. And this... I don't know about you, but you know when you use a pot and it's like your seasoned pot, this is the pot that I love to fry. I fry everything in there, my fish, my bullfrog. I feel like everything fries beautifully in it as opposed to any other dish that I have, and I just love to use it. So I am doing the dishes. I'm almost done cooking. I think the fish was the last thing that needed to be cooked. The rice is, the both rices, the wachi and the jollof are uh, just on very low heat trying to soften up the way I want and I'm just trying to clean up and before I dish out everything and we'll call it a night because at this time it's up it's late I'm getting this baby trying to get him to sleep so I can do bedtime and come and package the foods So yes, yeah, this octopus life is not easy, but we try to make it work. So I'm frying my fish at the same time as I'm doing my dishes. And now the fish is fried to perfection. That is the first batch. So I'm going to bring them out. It smells so good. And I'll go ahead and fry the rest. So typically a meal prep like this would take me somewhere from anywhere from uh, four to six hours depending on how much I'm doing you know because I'm not just cooking I'm doing laundry I'm you know I just set up especially one day to do all that and once I'm done I think it pays out for the whole week where I don't really have to do much so the bambara beans I'm just going to put in the fridge I have some overly ripe plantains that I was planning to make Kelly Willie for Thanksgiving but we all were like this is way too much food don't even bother so I'm making this ahead of time and hopefully sometime within the week I'll make some tatale with it, some you know, and then we'll have that. So I set that aside, we're done packaging the beans, and now I'm gonna dish out the soup. And I like always my soups, my stews, like okra stew, things that can get you know messy, your fish can fall apart in there. I like to portion them out. So when you come in my fridge, every bowl that I have in there, I know it's like a, a serving for the whole family. So I make sure we have enough that when we pick one bowl and we warm it up, we're going to finish it. And that way, I, I just don't like to have my meats all torn apart and just looking flaky and not beautiful and decent. So I did that. I portioned them out. And now I'm doing the jollof right now. And this is cooked to perfection, like how I like it. <laughs> and I hope you, you, you get a chance to watch my jollof videos and hopefully you will get a more detailed idea of how to make it if you need to do that. And so I meal prep, like meal prepping is like, I have the food for us at home all, and also I meal prep some in bowls so that we just grab them from the fridge on our work days and then we're out the door so that is what i'm trying to do with the rice and watch it i meal prep some for home and for work and so here is the stew now all done i put some in the bowls for work together with the watching and now i'm going to dish out the rest so and even that i'm going to divide into two so i can freeze one part of it and then the other part will just stay in the fridge for us to eat at home.
So I have just a half a cabbage. I have some carrots and other vegetables, cilantro and all. I quickly cut it up and I have some vegetables for the ones that I've prepped for work. And later on in the week, I will cook some more vegetables for us to eat everything else with. And there we are, all my meals done. I'm free, I can rest, I can relax. I hope this has motivated you and I would really like you to let me know if you think this is something you would like us to be doing a few more of in the future so we can meal prep together. So I'm going to cover everything and put them in the fridge and hopefully tomorrow I'll straighten out my freezer and I'm going to freeze two portions of the soup, one portion of the uh, watches stew and I'll bring them out of the freezer maybe two, anywhere two to four weeks down the line if we can have it, it will still be very fresh and that is how I need it prep. A lot of people have said their family members or their spouse and kids won't eat anything past two days and you have to do what works for your family. For us, this works. And I hope this gives you an idea and motivates you. So I'm going to clean up and then I'll call it a night. Thanks for doing this with me. I really appreciate your support for the channel. And until I come your way next time with something delicious, be loving, be kind, be happy.